gently close your eyes do deep breathing we'll chant om once together synchronize the chanting of om with your exhalation breathe in सहनावतु सहनो भुनत्तु सह वीर्यम करवावहै तेजस्विनावदी तमस्तु मावित विशावहै ओम शांति 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 gently open your eyes we'll chant from verses 6 to 10 of chapter 3 karmendriyani sayamya karmendriyani sayamya य आस्ते मन सास्मरन य आस्ते मन सास्मरन इंद्रियार्तान विमूढात्मा इंद्रियार्तान विमूढात्मा मिथ्याचार स उच्यते मिथ्याचार स उच्यते यस्त्विंद्रिया मनसा यस्त्विंद्रिया मनसा निर्जुन निर्जुन कर्मेन्द्रिय कर्मयोग कर्मेन्द्रिय कर्मयोग असक्त स विशिष्य असक्त सविशिष्यते नियतम कुरु कर्मत्वम नियतम कुरु कर्मत्वम कर्मज्यायो ह्य कर्मणः कर्मज्यायो ह्य कर्मणः शरीर यात्रा पिचते शरीर यात्रा पिचते न प्रसिद्धेद कर्मनः न प्रसिद्धेद कर्मनः यज्ञार्थात् कर्मनों यत्र यज्ञार्थात् कर्मनों यत्र लोकोयम कर्म बंधनः लोकोयम कर्म बंधनः तदर्थम कर्म कौंतेय तदर्थम कर्म कौंतेय 
ಮುಕ್ತ ಸಂಗ ಸಮಾಚರ ಮುಕ್ತ ಸಂಗ ಸಮಾಚರ ಸಹ ಯಜ್ಞ ಪ್ರಜಾ ಸೃಷ್ಟ ಸಹ ಯಜ್ಞ ಪ್ರಜಾ ಸೃಷ್ಟ ಪುರೋವಾಚ ಪ್ರಜಾಪತಿ ಪುರೋವಾಚ ಪ್ರಜಾಪತಿ ಅನೇನ ಪ್ರಸವಿಷ್ಯ ಅನೇನ ಪ್ರಸವಿಷ್ಯ ಯೇಷವೋಸ್ವಿಷ್ಟ ಕಾಮಧೂಕ್ ಯೇಷವೋಸ್ವಿಷ್ಟ ಕಾಮಧೂಕ್ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಡೇ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ವಿ ವೇರ್ ಸೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಫ್ಯೂ ಡೈಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ನಿಯತಂ ಕರ್ಮ ಇನ್ general terms niyatam karma is referred to as duty action which you are supposed to do so here he is directly saying perform your obligatory action perform your duties in life now the moment he talks about you performing your duty in our context right now let's take it as action some type of action that necessitates a person to overcome his or her tamas laziness in the second part of this verse that is what he is saying he says action is superior to inaction when we come there we'll be seeing that in detail but in in general terms what you need to understand is whenever you shirk your duties whenever you don't do something which you're supposed to do that is because of tamas only and a tamasic person can neither achieve anything in the world nor can that person achieve anything spiritually that is why these great masters they come down heavily upon tamas so even if we don't go into the specifics we have started doing that last week i had given you several principles today we'll be seeing more but even without going into all those specifics if you look at your life in general and if you apply this principle i have to do whatever i ought to do in my life now you will get a fair idea am i right now fulfilling my obligations yes or no that is it can never be black and white there is uh, uh, in certain areas you will be doing your obligation in certain areas you may not but taking life as a whole in general am i performing my obligations to the best of my ability am i showing that intention and am i backing up my intention with action these are the questions which you need to ask yourself if you have a family you have a, a certain set of duties to perform there you have to contribute 
to your uh, towards the welfare of the family if you don't do that then that becomes a very negative karma see uh, right now we are seeing karma from the point of view of action and akarma means in action we we are uh, seeing it that way but i have mentioned to you karma also means the effect of action the consequence so in life uh when you don't do something which you ought to do now that has very negative repercussions very negative consequences when you do an action how to do it perf- as perfectly as possible all that is what he is covering in the entire third chapter but the fundamental thing is you have to be in action if you neglect your duties then you will only have to face your consequences there are, there is a consequ- uh, you will have to face those consequences whenever you neglect something in your life now that doesn't uh, fade away that actually creates a lot of negative energy and uh, it starts creating issues in your life if you neglect taking care of your physical body if you don't follow the principles given in kaya tatva now definitely the the issues related to health will start surfacing even when a person follows all the principles of kaya tatva here and there there are chances of past karmas manifesting that can be overcome through sadhana but when you neglect the well being of the physical body that will have negative repercussions with regards to health for example let us say you are um uh, you are very lazy you don't get up from bed most of the time throughout the day i'm not talking of uh, getting uh, you know uh, being bedridden after getting some ailment i'm saying just out of habit some people what they do is they are always lying uh, on their uh, bed you know they don't want to get up even uh, food they expect somebody to come and serve them if you know they always look for opportunities to avoid action if that is your lifestyle it means you are neglecting a major duty with respect to your physical body they they you know some people they have bed tea bed coffee bed breakfast bed lunch bed dinner everything they do it in the bed only <laughs> see if that is your lifestyle what are you creating you are actually creating a karma where you will be permanently in bed after a while see your life is your creation only so when we talk of negative consequences it is not merely about doing something in a wrong way when you avoid doing something which you have to do that also creates negative karma if you avoid your duties towards your wife or husband or children now after a while a lot of issues will start surfacing your spouse will uh, say that uh, you know i am not happy with you your children will say i am not happy with you at least at that time you should wake up the ego 
prevents you from accepting, correcting and moving on. So all this healing, the sadhana, everything will work only if you basically, fundamentally do your duties in life. Remember this. This healing is not meant for tamasic people to just uh, keep receiving the energy and uh, you know they say, I am not interested in doing anything. I will just keep lazing around. Let the energy work for me. It will not work. The energy will work. How? It will keep bringing all kinds of problems into your life so that you will be forced to get up and act. It is interesting. When you do sadhana, it is better you overcome your tamas simultaneously. If not, how will the Guru Shakti function? How will the higher Shakti function? If you are tamasic, then in order to get you out of your tamas, the higher Shakti will create some issues in your life. It's not that it is creating. The consequence of uh, uh, neglecting the duties will start surfacing. Why is that happening in nature? So that you are forced to overcome your tamas. So, whether it is with, with respect to your physical health, whether it is with respect to your wife or husband, whether it is with respect to your children, whether it is with respect to your uh, career, work, any aspect you take, if you neglect whatever you ought to do, you will have to face the consequences, even financial aspect. If you don't put in effort to earn wealth, it's not only a question of earning. Supposing, let's say, you've inherited a lot of wealth. Now, I know people who, who have inherited uh, a lot of wealth and within a span of few years, they, uh, they again become bankrupt because they don't know how to maintain it. Again, there's a lot of discipline required to maintain what you've earned, to multiply it. So all this requires efforts and if you don't put in those efforts, some reason you are giving, now nature will force you to come out of tamas by creating financial issues. If you neglect a duty towards your wife, now nature will force you to change by creating a rift between you and your wife or you and your husband. So that is a time where you need to do some self-introspection. If you neglect your duty towards your children, nature will force you to change by creating some kind of an issue. That is also a blessing only in disguise because that is a methodology which has been created by the infinite power to help you, to force you to overcome the tamas. But what is interesting is, when you are in a state of tamas, it's very difficult to come out of it. So in spite of all the issues, you will still try to uh, uh, neglect the duties. But after a while, the pressure of the situation will become so much that you will, uh, you know, it will cause so much of pain to you that you will be forced to take corrective measures. Again, many, I know many people, they act when there is a, a, a sudden uh, difficulty or some issue, some crisis. And the moment uh, crisis goes away, again they get into a state of tamas. So you have to watch your mind. You have to be very careful, especially when you are gaining this higher wisdom. Because when you receive this healing Shakti, 
it is bound to create a lot of positive energy in your life you will get a lot of benefits now when you get a lot of benefits in different areas of your life there is always a chance to become more tamasic instead you should immediately thank god and intensify your efforts become more focused in your sadhana you should do your duties with more vigor this higher energy should not be misused now you may say sir i am not uh, uh, using this energy to destroy anybody or to create harm to anyone neglecting your duties itself is equivalent to creating harm to society see supposing you take a garden now let us say you don't maintain the garden you neglect the garden completely you don't water the plants you don't do whatever is required now what will happen will the garden maintain its uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the same uh, will it maintain itself at the same state no when you don't do whatever you ought to do there when you don't maintain it when you neglect the garden after a while a lot of weeds will start growing the entire garden will become a mess so neglecting your duties will have negative consequences this is what you need to understand so that's why when it comes to performance of obligatory action krishna is giving a direct message so the direct message is a kind of a caution a warning if you don't do what you ought to do in life you cannot escape the law of karma the karmic consequences will come back to you i know some people who just uh you know they, they don't pay attention to their health they don't pay attention to their work they just simply resign from a, a job because of some a small quarrel with they have and they just simply sit at home and you know once the, all the savings goes away and all that then they get into real trouble so when you are doing this yoga sankirtan sadhana when you are uh, uh, receiving the higher healing shakti through this yogic approach use that energy to overcome your tamas first find out what are the areas where i am tamasic where all am i neglecting my duties in those areas you start applying yourself and start acting get into action get into karma see a yogi who is meditating now he radiates the infinite energy and that becomes his karma that is that becomes his seva that becomes his duty see that's why uh, uh, we i am uh, avoiding the word uh, karma that is i'm uh, whenever i'm using the word karma i'm defining it because that word can be used in so many uh, contexts you know so according to the context it will change seva also we can call as karma general action also we can call as karma duty we can call as karma consequence we can call as karma so many things are there so when a yogi sits and meditates he is doing the highest seva the highest duty towards humanity not only towards humanity towards the entire universe 
Now, a tamasic person, a tamasic mind, when it observes a yogi, it immediately thinks, ah, I also don't need to do anything. I'll just simply sit and do meditation. You cannot do meditation. There is a world of a difference between the dynamic silence which a yogi experiences and a tamasic sleep which a tamasic person experiences. A tamasic person gets into a state of sleep, sloth. Externally, it may look like meditation. So, never ever try to emulate a master. It will not work. Instead, find out in your life, what is it that you ought to do? So, you have your immediate family, you have your work. If you are not working, first get a job, start working. If you are not taking care of your family, first do that. Only then this healing Shakti will work. Otherwise, it will work up to a point and then because of the blocks which your own uh, karmas are uh, creating, that is, which you have created actually, because of those blocks, the healing Shakti will stop flowing. Please understand this. So, Niyatam Kuru Karmatvam Perform your obligatory action. This is the mantra which you need to follow in your life. It doesn't matter what stage of life you are in. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what is the nature of your work. All these things um, are unique, are specific to uh, you, that is you as an individual. But the general principle is Niyatam Kuru Karmatva. Perform your obligatory action. So I am mentioning this because there are some sadhaks who have, you know who are uh, uh, who are getting into a state of tamas or laziness with the moment they get a few benefits now that this is a direct message to all of them don't do that you will uh, you know when the consequences of your karmas come you will only have to unnecessarily suffer this healing Shakti will always be given. But that doesn't mean your travel, your uh, journey will be pleasant. It all depends on how you use it. If you are using it in a tamasic way, the healing Shakti will try to make your journey more unpleasant so that you get out of your tamas. That's what he means. Action is superior to inaction. Rajas is better than, sattva, uh, than tamas. So, when it comes to doing your duties, I told you last week, you have to balance the, um, the two aspects of giving and receiving. Giving means something which goes out of you. Receiving means that something which comes into you. Into you means into your life. So, duties are of three types. The first and primemost duty is the duty towards God. What is my purpose in life? The duty which as a human being you are supposed to do. That is, fulfill the ultimate purpose in life. We can call it the ultimate duty or the absolute duty, the primordial duty. And you can fulfill that purpose by doing your sadhana on a daily basis. Number two, duty towards yourself. So, the first is the duty towards the infinite. 
बिकॉज विदाउट द इन्फिनिट नन ऑफ एस कैन इवन एग्जिस्ट सो दैट इज वाई वी डू द साधना दैट इज द लीस्ट थिंग विच वी कैन डू टू डू साधना एंड गेट अट्यून्ड to that infinite power the second duty is the duty towards yourself as an individual this is what uh, is the taking aspect um what commonly people call as rights so you have a duty towards yourself you have to take care of your physical body you have to take care of your emotions you have to take care of your thoughts taking care of yourself is not selfishness when you take care of yourself at the cost of another person by harming another person by denying another person what that person uh what you need to uh do to that person then that becomes selfishness remember that so the first thing is duty to uh, the second second thing is duty towards yourself and then the third type of duty is duty towards the world world means it's a very broad terminology so your immediate family then your workplace like this your friends your country like this you can uh, you know you can put concentric circles immediate family is the first circle then it may be your friends then so you have uh, certain things to do so performing all of uh, those duties is what is meant by niyatam karma so anyone who focuses and does these three types of duties duty towards god duty towards oneself and duty towards the world becomes a powerful karma yogi he will start exhausting and burning up all the karmas karmas means the the impressions which have been created from within the yoga sankirtan sadhana is designed to help you do these three kinds of duties in your life that's why i started off by saying don't use the yoga sankirtan sadhana to increase your laziness then you will uh, face a lot of problems see if a person doesn't do any sadhana and if that person is lazy he will have to face the consequence if you are doing sadhana and then if you are neglecting duties it you are increasing the negative karmas more that is why this word of caution is given to all the sadhaks if you fall from the from a small height your injury will be less but the higher you go the more sadhana you do the more healing shakti you are receiving the responsibility also increases from there if you fall your injury will be more severe the consequences of your action or inaction even avoiding action also is is a kind of action only that is called tamasic action tamasic karma or akarma here he is using the term akarma so these are the three types of duties which you need to perform in life so when you perform duty towards the world that is what is the giving aspect when you perform the duty towards yourself that is the taking aspect when you perform the duty towards god by doing your sadhana that is called nishkama sadhana nishkama means no desire particular desire if at all the desire is only for uh becoming one with the infinite that you cannot compare that with other desires that is called mumukshatva so uh there you rise beyond giving and taking you are neither a giver 
nor are you a taker. You just do the sadhana and that starts purifying you. It purifies each and every aspect of your personality. So this is a beautiful balance between the higher spirituality and the uh, relative aspect of spirituality which is dealing with yourself and the world. So unless and until you balance these two things by performing these three t uh, types of duties, you cannot evolve spiritually, you cannot become, you, you cannot be peaceful in your life. So when it, coming, uh, when it comes to the giving and uh, taking, now the proper balance has to be there. So some people, they focus so much on doing their duty towards the world and they neglect themselves. After a while, they get into a lot of problems and suffering and uh, that itself becomes an impediment. Their capacity to do the duties further actually becomes very less. Similarly, some people focus so much on their rights. They only keep, uh, keep taking. Now, such people will also get into a lot of issues. They cannot be peaceful and that system cannot continue after a while. So the give and take has to be uh, properly balanced. Now again, don't try to emulate yogis. Some yogis, they neglect their health and all and give healing to others. I have seen that. But uh, just because they do that, if you also try to emulate that, you will get into problem. See, it's, uh, it's, uh, after a certain stage, you rise beyond body consciousness. So, the, the yogis, sometimes they neglect the, their welfare when time is short and they want to serve as many people as possible. But uh, the suffering which the body goes through, I mean, they detach their consciousness from that suffering. So, you cannot do all that. Uh, it's not so simple. So, that is why never do what a master does. Do what he says. If you were to do what a master does, then you will get into all sorts of uh, problems. So, this is a very practical sadhana principle which Krishna is giving from our level. So, you practice it at your level. That is what is very important. So, intelligently balance the outflow and inflow, the giving and the receiving. If uh, uh, last week I had given you uh, many examples for that, you know. So, the same principle, this, that is this principle of balancing the giving and receiving can be applied in every area of your life. So, that is why the great Siddhas, what they say is, give love and receive love. Give wealth, that is the charity, and receive wealth, that is your earnings. Bo both have to be balanced. Even love, if you keep on giving and you are not receiving anything, either you should be at that level of a sthita pragnya. Sthita pragnya is not, uh, is not in the cycle at all of karma. That's why I am saying don't try to emulate a master. Otherwise, you, 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 you will create a lot of wounds within you, emotional wounds. So that is why the right balance is always necessary. So, taking is not selfishness. So, if you take whatever you deserve, there is nothing wrong with it. Similarly, giving alone cannot work in life. You should give 
in proportion to your to what you are receiving that is why even in the scriptures they they have given uh, the even what these masters are saying is that uh take a small portion of your earnings like 10% 11% and uh utilize it for charity so the fundamental principle is i am good and i do good to the world world means whomever you are interacting with and i keep evolving towards the ultimate purpose if you say i will do something for you but in the process i will keep on suffering if that is your philosophy then you cannot continue after a while if you say i will enjoy but i uh, i will ensure that you suffer even that cannot continue for a while this is the best system which our yogis are suggesting and if you think about it logically this system alone will work in the long run why i am mentioning this especially in uh, spirituality there are people who feel guilty to enjoy the basic things in life unnecessary guilt so one very interesting tip i'll give you regarding the giving and taking in life generally you need to balance the giving aspect and the taking aspect receiving aspect now what is important is when they say function without any expectations what do they mean when you are engaged in the action of giving at that time don't think about taking that is what is meant by acting without expectations similarly the other aspect is also true when you are receiving don't think about giving because that will create a guilt right now you are receiving the healing shakti you are receiving this wisdom receive it fully now don't think about oh what uh, i have to repay what can i repay that is when you are engaged in that activity you can think about that but when you are receiving if you think about uh, giving you will create an unnecessary guilt similarly when you are giving if you are thinking about taking then that will pollute your action that will pollute your motives so what these masters are saying is when you are acting you will either be in giving or in taking understand what is your role and do it fully when you are giving love give love fully when you are receiving love receive love fully that will strengthen you and in life balance both very carefully 50% of your life should be on this side 50% on that side then such a life will be a wonderful life you will you will become so peaceful happy and you will be able to achieve anything you want to achieve so when you uh when when you don't practice this when you are giving if you are thinking about taking then you will become uh, uh, selfish you will not be able to do your duties towards the world properly similarly when you are receiving if you keep thinking about giving that will create a kind of an unnecessary guilt within you it will not allow you to experience life fully so you will become very weak a yogi is one who um does both these aspects in a full way and then last week i had given you uh, another uh, uh dimension to it the niyatam karma can be divided into two types nitya karma and naimittika karma this will help you to uh, uh to organize your life in a in a in a proper way 
So when it comes to duties, that is whether it is uh, duty towards God or whether it is duty towards yourself or whether it is duty towards the world, it falls under two categories. Nitya karma, things which you have to do on a daily basis, regular basis. And then naimitika karma, occasional special duties. So you can use this principle of Nitya Karma and Naimitika Karma to organize your life. What is it, uh, what are the things which I need to do on a daily basis? What are the things which, uh, we, uh, you know, which I need to do on a regular basis? Both will come under Nitya Karma, daily and regular. And then, Give the buffer time when you are uh, organizing your life. Give a lot of buffer time for occasional special duties. Because occasional special duties will not uh, uh, come when you are expecting it. It may crop up suddenly. But you have given enough buffer time to be able to handle that. So, as I told you, karma means action. Now, we will see a few more dimensions of niyatam, which will make your actions better. See, first is overcoming your tamas and getting into action. And then the question is, how do we keep on perfecting our actions? Every day, every moment when you are uh, performing your actions, you can apply this principle of niyatam. So, we have, I have already given you a few dimensions. I am just covering uh, that in brief and then uh, some subtle points I will give and then we will get into other dimensions. So, the first dimension of niyatam, niyatam means that which has to be done in a particular way. Inevitable. Niyatam means inevitable, that which has to happen in this way. So, in every area of your life, there are certain laws. So, you need to follow those laws properly. A, a, a husband and wife get together to start a family. Now, a husband has to function in a particular way. A wife has to function in a particular way. This is inevitable. In a relationship I am talking of, the husband has to give love and receive love. The wife has to give love and receive love. This is how that very relationship is structured. This is inevitable. If you go out of that, you will get into trouble. Number two, the second dimension is niyatam means that which is assigned. Niyatam means something which has been assigned to you. What has been assigned to you that is defined by your own individual nature. So each one of you, you have a certain unique nature. You are good at certain things. So now perform your actions based on your nature. We will be seeing that uh, in the later verses where he will be talking about Swadharma. Swadharma means one's own nature. So, niyatam includes that also. See, this, this phrase niyatam karma, actually, uh, if you expand that, you get the entire uh, karma yoga. The different aspects of karma yoga can be derived just by expanding this word niyatam and adding the word karma to it. Very interesting. So, when we are using the yogic approach and getting into the depth of these verses, we are not only going into the depth of this verse, but it is also acting as a preparation for the coming verses. That is the beauty of yogic approach. So, niyatam means assigned. So, niyatam karma means that action which is which has been assigned to you by nature 
So naturally, you may have a talent with respect to singing. Naturally, you may have a talent with respect to accountancy or business or sales or whatever it is. So that should be tapped. When you don't tap your individual potential, then your life uh, gets wasted. So that is the meaning of assigned. That is a dimension. Now, the third dimension of niyatam is niyatam means disciplined. So niyatam karma means disciplined action. Whenever you are acting in an indisciplined way, then you are performing action, but it is not niyatam karma. So how do you bring about a discipline in your life? That is where this nitya karma and naimitika karma, that principle helps you. Using that principle, you formulate a proper schedule a daily schedule, a weekly schedule, a yearly schedule, then your life becomes very disciplined. And in that schedule, give enough buffer time, have some time for relaxation, have some time for holidays, everything, you know. Your schedule should be a well-balanced schedule. Some people, in the name of a schedule, they have a uh, you know, a very, very tight schedule. They, they focus only on certain aspects of life. No. Your schedule should encompass every aspect of your life, starting from your work, your family, your uh, recreation. Recreation is a duty towards yourself. You are relaxing so that you can come back with more energy. So like this, Everything has a place in life. If you formulate a schedule, the nitya karmas accordingly, then it becomes a very disciplined life. So what is the difference? Primarily, what is the difference between a disciplined life and an indisciplined life? A dis in a disciplined life, you are well organized. Whereas when you are leading an indisciplined life, you are not at all organized. That's all. A simple difference. And when you are well organized, you become a creator of your life. When you are not organized, when you are indisciplined, then you lose those powers of being a creator of your life. You become a victim of your destiny. So now the choice is yours. Do you want to be a master of your destiny? Or do you want to be a victim of your destiny? Do you want to be a creator of your destiny? Or do you want to be a slave of your destiny? It is up to you. If you follow this principle of niyatam, this dimension, being disciplined in your life, you will become a creator. If you don't follow this, then you will become a slave. So niyatam Kuru Karmatvam means lead a very disciplined life where you balance out your work, your enjoyment, your recreation, your other duties, everything in a proper way. Then you will move forward in life in a very balanced way. It's a beautiful dimension. And then, another dimension of niyatam. Niyatam means being restrained. Actually, we saw this in the previous verses, where, uh, you know, he used the word niyamya. Uh, uh, the, it is an extension of that only. Being restrained means keeping your mind in check when you are living your life. If you allow your mind 
to go out of your control when you are experiencing your life then your life will not be under your control your own mind is your friend your own mind is your enemy also when your mind is within your control it is your friend when your mind goes out of your control it becomes your enemy your mind in you is like a knife you can use a knife for destructive purposes you can use a knife for constructive purposes a killer uses a knife to destroy others a doctor uses the knife to save another person's life a cook uses the same knife to cut the vegetables and give you a wonderful dish to make others happy so the knife being one you can use it constructively or destructively so remember your mind is there with you it's a most powerful instrument which has been given to you when it goes out of your control then uh, it will create havoc when you practice niyatam that is restraint of mind when you are functioning in life then that will your mind will become your friend it will help you it will support you why is it that many a times you go off mood you get into a sorrowful mood or an angry mood and then you lose yourself because the mind is not under your control so doing the sadhana on a daily basis doing the yoga sankirtan sadhana will help you to practice this dimension of niyatam that is experiencing life fully but keeping your mind under check they, they look like two opposite things but they are not because when you allow the mind to go in an indisciplined way without any control without any restraint after a while you will not have any energy left then what is the use heaven and hell are makings or creations of your own mind only when your mind is happy it is heaven when your mind is agitated stressed it is hell so niyatam karma perform niyatam karma means do all your actions in life do all your duties towards yourself towards the world and towards the highest do everything in the right way but niyatam let your mind be under your control that is where the real sadhana comes because many people say ah i am doing my duties but their minds are not under their control to that extent then the duty gets polluted your energies get dissipated why is this uh, dimension of restraining so important in every verse he is talking about this last uh, two three verses we have been seeing that why because when you act in life you need to conserve your energies see if your energies are not conserved you cannot do anything so niyatam is the best way by which you can conserve your energy when you do action without this niyatam without conserving the energies of your mind what will happen is you will get tired mentally tired i'm not talking of physical tiredness that if you sleep and all that you will be refreshed but otherwise most people get mentally tired action tires you today because there is no control over the mind actually it is not the action which tires you it is your own mind which tires you 
So when you do mere karma, mere action, you will get tired. When you do niyatam karma, you will never get tired mentally. You will always be fresh. So you, if, if you see a master, he is always fresh. If at all there is any tiredness, that will be with respect to the physical body. And if he gives some rest, that can be restored easily. But the mental tiredness will never be experienced by a yogi. So if you follow this simple uh, dimension of niyatam, and when you are doing your karmas, now you will keep doing so many activities in life, you will be extremely dynamic, but at the same time, you will never become mentally tired. You will always maintain your peace. The mental peace will be maintained. This is what Lord Krishna practically demonstrated in his life. You see, in this Mahabharata war, Krishna was a charioteer of Arjuna. That is the most difficult work to do. Because the charioteer is sitting in the front, the warrior is at the back. So, every arrow which the opponent sends will first attack the charioteer only. He is <laughs> right there in the front. Krishna masterminded the whole world war. But he was never tired mentally. He, I mean, you, uh, Krishna was way beyond the mind. He is a supreme avatar, you know. But we are only, uh, whenever we are taking these uh, examples, we are seeing certain aspects of Krishna. You cannot capture an avatar with just a few aspects. He is way, way beyond all this. But when we study these aspects, that inspires us. When we absorb that energy, we are able to perform our duties better. So, in spite of engaging himself in uh, such intense activity, he still maintained his cheer, his calmness. He was always smiling. So, niyatam karma, the sadhana of niyatam karma helps you to be very relaxed amidst intense activity. See, today, for the activities, uh, the moment they come in front of you, now you lose your uh, calmness. Again, relaxed activity doesn't mean you do activities in a very slow way. Some people in the name of relaxation they do uh, things in a very slow way. That is tamasic. Where it's required, you may act very fast. I'm only talking of the mental relaxation. So, a few responsibilities you take up immediately, the restlessness starts. That is why he says, Niyatam Karma. Niyatam Kuru Karmatva. Do niyatam karma. It is not enough if you act, but act with niyatam. Why is that? See, if you really think about it, nothing in the world is worth losing your peace of mind. The peace of mind is the greatest wealth which you can acquire. And really speaking, just for the sake of few activities which you have taken up, is it worth to trade your peace? So, whenever you get into a state of stress, immediately ask yourself this question. Is this worth losing my peace of mind? The moment you ask yourself this question, your mind will calm down. Then you will be able to act better. 
If you are inspired by this phrase, Niyatam Karma, the moment you get stress, just do take a deep breath, do some deep breathing and say Niyatam Karma to yourself in the mind, you know, with the breath. The moment you say that, that energy will flow and your mind will calm down. The energy of Niyatam, the energy of restraint will immediately flow through you. It will pull back the mind which is getting stressed. So this is applicable for a tamasic person and a rajasic person. Very interesting. If you are avoiding action, say Niyatam Karma. Actually, you don't even need to say Niyatam Karma. You have to say Karma. First, get into action. But when you get into action, there will be a tendency for the mind to get stressed. There, you say Niyatam Karma. Restraint of the mind. We have covered that in the previous verses by the mind, Manasa. I had taken it in detail, you know. So, this is a homework, this is a practice which you can uh, uh, keep doing in every area of your life. Wherever you are getting stressed, just take a few deep breaths. Niyatam Karma. Is it really worth it? Ask yourself. So, the moment you ask, is it really worth it? The tendency will be to get into tamas. Therefore, stop action. No. He is not asking you to stop your activity. He is only asking you to stop the rambling of the mind. Niyatam. That is the meaning of niyatam. When you are acting. Your body should be subject to the laws of dynamics. And the mind should be subject to the laws of statics. This is what is Niyatam Karma. In physics we say, no, there are laws of dynamics, there are laws of statics. Now when you combine these two and when you function in the world, that is a beautiful sadhana. So every day, Whatever the Yoga Sankirtan which has been given to you and the other empowerment courses, all these things are meant to get you into that state of Niyatam Karma, where you are able to act dynamically in the world and at the same time keep your peace of mind intact. It is a beautiful combination. That's why earlier in the second chapter, Krishna said, Yoga karma su kaushalam means skill and action is yoga. Samatvam yoga vuchyate, the balance of mind, that is yoga. These are the two wonderful aspects of the yogic life. So, yogic life doesn't mean now you have to grow a beard and you have to uh, wear a particular kind of a dress and you have to leave everything. Not all that. Whatever is it that you are doing in life, if you are able to combine the niyatam and the karma, karma is, uh, uh, you know, external action, niyatam is for the mind, then you become a great yogi. You don't need to declare yourself. <laughs> Some people declare. They say, do you know, I am doing sadhana. Whenever they get an opportunity, they try to tell others. That is also ego. You are trying to say, I am a great sadhak, I am a great sadhak. A true sadhak will not unnecessarily say all this. He will just go about doing all his duties in a perfect way, in a spirit of niyatam. So this combination is your goal. This combination is your path also. Niyatam karma, when it, it is taken to the hundred percent, it becomes the infinite. That is a goal. The same niyatam karma, 
when you bring it to your level, it becomes your path. It is not, in, in spirituality, it is not that you have a path and you have to reach a different goal. No. The same path becomes the goal at the ultimate level. And the same goal becomes the path at the relative level. So amazing, very, very inspiring. Niyatam kuru karmatvam. Doesn't it speak so much to you? If it doesn't, never mind. Next week, more points will be given. By hook or by crook. If you are attending this, the master by hook or by crook, he will ensure that this wisdom is instilled in your, in the deepest level of your personality. Okay, so we'll stop with this here. Very, very powerful messages have been given. You reflect on them. Put them into practice straight away. Every time you practice a few things, when you come back, you can receive more energy. So before we do the Nididhyasana meditation, I will take up a question. This question has been asked by Ashish Garg. He has put it in the YouTube comment section. Yogishri, I have a question related to a ritual of Shraddha. I am seeing this ritual since childhood. Why do we remember ancestors every year during this time? Their souls would have already moved on and taken a new body. What impact will it have on their souls and on us? I am sure as a ritual is there, it will have some deeper meaning. I also see during these days, I sometimes get grandparents in my dreams, which is very strange. Kindly guide. This is a, a very important question which Ashish Ji has asked. Now, first of all, the ritual of Shraddham. Not only every year, but even when somebody dies, the first uh, 13 days the ritual is there. So many things were kept. Now, I am not getting into every little detail of those rituals and the significance of that, the deeper meaning behind that. That will be very exhaustive. But I will give you the general principle. These rituals had a twofold purpose. When someone passes away, now your mind gets disturbed. So to create positive energy within you, they chanted the various mantras so that those vibrations will help you to overcome the sorrow. And as far as the departed souls was concerned, those mantras, the positive vibrations from those mantras will help the soul, the uh, soul of the departed person to progress further in their journey. This was the idea. Now, this once a year thing, your question now is, if that person has been reborn, now then why are we doing this once a year? First of all, let us look at it from your angle. As far as you are concerned, whether that person ha is has, uh, born again or not, it doesn't matter. You have your memories about that person. Your connection is with the soul, not merely with the body. Now, if you see from the other person's point of view, even though that person has being born again. Being born means was, has taken up another birth. This ritual is done only for the soul, not for the body. So that soul is continuing its journey. So the effect of this, when the, when the right intention is there, 
will reach that soul where whether that person is born again or not it is irrelevant so the effect is not going to get altered just because another uh, person is has taken birth now there is a deeper uh, significance also uh, when that context comes i'll explain in one i, I think it was in the second chapter i'd explain this a bit actually what our yogi says that the soul can divide into many parts and according to the karmas and the major chunk takes a birth but there could be certain parts of the soul which get stuck somewhere in certain uh, uh, negative dimensions because of the karmas so these uh, mantras the, these positive vibrations actually help in uh, the integration of the soul as they called it yoga actually means integration at all levels so when you do your sadhana uh, see you have taken this physical body you are born but or in all your past births your soul kept on disintegrating so all those also get resolved and from the soul level your personality starts integ- uh, getting integrated in an empowerment program like we are going to have the 22 days finding rhythm in life the integration of the soul happens at a very uh, powerful uh, uh, level that is why when you attend the empowerment programs you feel full you feel so content why because the integration of the soul happens so as far as you are concerned no need to go into such technicalities whether the soul whether has taken a uh, new body or not and all that you performing the ritual if you do it with the right attitude definitely it will create a positive energy on you and with this you you, you when you when you understand this logic that wherever that soul is let this energy go and reach that soul and benefit that person that's all but as far as a sadhak is concerned you are doing the higher sadhana these, these rituals also have their own limitations when you are doing the yoga sankirtan sadhana the highest positive energy is being uh, invoked from right from the infinite dimension when you ta- when you attend the empowerment courses the master actually invokes the highest shakti for you so when that shakti is being invoked now automatically it will not only benefit you it will benefit all the people who are karmically related to you your immediate family your ancestors everyone that is why in the upanishad it is said if one person becomes a sadhak now seven generations are benefited this way and that way you may ask then what about eight generation i have just said seven because that is very prominent so when you are attending an empowerment program actually all your ancestors also get benefited they get their ascension so all your duties your uh, they call it as pitra rana pitra rana means you know we are we we have certain duties towards our ancestors similarly deva rana means duties towards the natural forces devas actually represent the natural forces like for example indra is rain god then you have sun god then you have moon god each every part of nature has been divinized by our great masters so you have a obligation there then you have manushya rana duty towards your fellow men bhutarana towards uh, the 
uh, other beings. So all these runas, obligations get fulfilled when you actually do your sadhana, the higher sadhana. If you want to do the rituals, please do so. Uh, that is only going to create uh, the positive effect only. But for a person who is doing the higher sadhana, now automatically the positive effect will reach to the deepest core of his personality and all others who are karmically related to him. That is the beauty. So as far as the grandparents coming in your dreams and all that, see, you know, we have to get into dream. dream a dream has two aspects. One is the psychological aspect, other is the mystical aspect. The psychological aspect is your own mind. If you are attached to your, uh, uh, if you were attached to your grandparents, they you may dream about them here and there. Not only really attached, thoughts also. The dreams are nothing but projection of your thoughts from a psychological level. So your grandparents, your many people who you know who have died, they still live within you as your memories. So that may get churned. But the mystical aspect is, sometimes the soul can uh, uh, come in your dream. That is also possible. Especially if you are a sadhak, if you are going to attend any empowerment program. Many sadhaks have reported this. A few months before the empowerment program, they get these dreams of ancestors and all that. That is just an indication that uh, this energy, you know, they, uh, this energy is going to reach their souls. So they are also quite excited. Nothing to really um, worry about. Just leave it as it is. Your focus should be on your sadhana. Do your daily sadhana. Do uh, when you are attending the empowerment course, receive the energy fully. Then you get benefited, your ancestors get benefited, people who will be born in your, uh, in your line will be benefited. Right now, people who are interacting with you will be benefited. It is a, a, a benefit to yourself and to everyone concerned. So more than this, I am not getting into the ritualistic part and the significant because I am trying to relate everything to sadhana. See, whenever a question is being answered, I am not so much bothered about the technicality of your question and the technicality of the answer. I am more concerned about how to get you back onto sadhana. That is the focus of any master. But I think I have given some basic information for your uh, uh, doubts to get clarified. If you have something more, feel free to ask. When the context comes, uh, that will also be taken up. Okay? So now we will do the Nididhyasana meditation. Gently close your eyes. Do deep breathing. With every breath, I am becoming more and more relaxed.
feel the divine vibrations with every breath i am going deeper and deeper into myself beyond this physical body beyond these emotions beyond these thoughts lies my true essential self my higher self is infinite and divine from this moment onwards i choose to do the sacred sadhana of niyatam karma
आई एम स्वयं प्रकाशित सेल्फ इल्यूमिनेटिंग offer your gratitude to god supreme offer your gratitude to your guru and all the holy masters slowly come back Wiggle your fingers, your toes. Rub your palms together to create a warmth. Cup your eyes with your palms. gently rub your eyes your cheeks forehead top of the head back of the head and neck slowly open your eyes Welcome back. So we had a very powerful session today. Excellent sadhana principles have been given. This phrase niyatam karma actually contains the very essence of karma yoga so when we go deep into this and absorb this energy it will become much more easy to absorb the energy of the coming verses because every verse in this chapter is giving one aspect of karma yoga niyatam karma is a complete essence we can say a 
Okay. So as far as the 22 day program is concerned, do your daily sadhana that will prepare you. These sessions are also meant to prepare you because energy levels are going to be extremely high. There are several sadhaks who have uh, registered for their parents, some for their little kids. Now a separate list is being made and that will uh, be kept on my table. So special healing will be given to them, especially if there is any ailment and all that, do make a mention, uh, do send a note so that special healing will be given. Otherwise, to all the sadhaks who have registered, every day the preparatory healing energy is being sent. So that is why I am reminding you every week to do your daily sadhana. Because the, when the help is being given from outside and when you put in your efforts, your, you, you will receive maximum benefits. Okay? So, thank you very much. I'll see you in the next session. Hari Om.